So say you're on your part three exam, you get a question similar to this. It may be broken down into less parts, but I wanted to cover more compared to less. So what outlines acceptance and commissioning procedures? What is the difference between acceptance and commissioning? Do you use golden beam data and what is it? At bare minimum, what should be measured for photons and electrons at commissioning? What are typical timeframes for commissioning? When scanning for data, what are some tank considerations? And then what are some things you'd want to check prior to actually scanning when you are doing these tests? So first thing is TG106. That covers everything we need to know about acceptance and commissioning. So reference that right off the bat and read it if you haven't so far. So the acceptance is done by the vendor with a physicist present and require signatures. They're essentially tests that ensure that what you purchase, that machine is up to the specifications and the vendor's tolerances. Whereas the commissioning is actually the data that you put in the treatment planning system. And this is obviously performed by the physicist prior to release for the clinical use of the machine or software. So the difference between acceptance and commissioning, I've just mentioned, so I think we can move on from it, but it's important to know the difference. Often they're used interchangeably, but there is a difference between acceptance and commissioning. So now golden beam data, it's very important that you know, know in your clinic, what do you use? A golden beam data typically among the older crowd is less ideal than taking your own measurements, but golden beam data is essentially a standardized data set that the installers, a Varian, Electa, attempt to match when they put a machine within your clinic. So TG106 says that you can use this, but use caution and be careful to take direct measurements and verify that the golden beam data is correct. Because remember, this is going in your treatment planning system. If that information isn't exactly correct compared to your machine, your setup, then all of the doses and estimations you make with your TPS are going to be incorrect. So at bare minimum, what should we measure for photons and electrons? So photons here, we have our percent depth doses, which you should know. We also have our beam profiles. Now this means both our inline and cross line. We have our wedge factors that we need. A lot of this you can think about the MU check. What would you need for the MU check for a photon field? You also have your MLC data. So that includes the leakage, the penumbra, what MLCs do you have? How many do you have? What's the DLG? Things of that nature. The scatter factors is something that is also important that you need to put in. And then also the tray factors. So now for electrons, we are going to need similarly, we need percent depth doses, right? And we still need profiles. We still need those in-plane and cross-plane profiles. But here in the electrons, we're using cones all the time. So we need cone factors. You also need the applicator or insert factors because you're going to be using different applicators and when they are not 10 by 10 field size, which is what we base our output on, there is a change because of it. We also need our virtual source position. And so those are the things that at bare minimum you need for these two, two particles, the photon beam and the electron beam. So what are some typical time frames for commissioning? And this is a, just to kind of show that you have clinical relevance and understanding in generally how long this may take. So that is typically four to six weeks is a pretty safe assessment. Some, if you get a consulting company, they can do it in possibly even a week, but they are working tirelessly and literally nonstop. So when scanning for data, what are some tank considerations? So the tank needs to be 5, 5 cm larger than your largest field size. You also want uh, probably a 75 by 75 cm uh, cube tank. 
And then if you have any less than that, like if your tank is too small, you are going, you aren't going to get full scatter conditions. And that is going to limit the accuracy of your results. You also want to use distilled water and you also want to watch for evaporation because that will happen overnight and just throughout the day. So what are some things to check prior to scanning? So definitely check TG106. I think this is something that we don't do very often as a physics community and doing QA on the tank, I think it is important. So uh, first of all, you want to be sure that your detector is calibrated. Now, hopefully by just doing monthly QA and things, you can verify that, but make sure it's calibrated. Also, make sure that the motor is calibrated. And so this can be tests that the vendor runs to verify that when you have your chamber in the in the tank and it's moving for profiles and it's moving up and down and cross plane or doing diagonal scans that that motor is moving at the speed you think it's moving. So our, is the water level. So you wanna verify that the water is level. And so that's going to make a difference on your beam profiles if somehow that tank is at a slant. You also want to use a reference chamber and a detector that to verify that the water level is essentially flat and be sure to account for the, the EPOM, the effective point of measurement. That's important when you're taking any of those. Be sure that you scan from the bottom of the tank to the top to minimize the disturbances in water. You also want some review data. And then you also want to, again, read TG106, and they have a ton of recommendations. So if you have any other questions about acceptance and commissioning, please comment below. Thank you for watching, and happy studying.